Starting in 2006, Old Blind Publishing has focused on creating, marketing, distributing, and retailing high-quality books and e-books. The company has set itself apart from its competitors by offering high-quality publishing services to both new and established authors and incorporating digital printing for all their catalog titles. And Craig is going to tell us more all about that and his other company, uh, Maple Creek Media. And then also all kinds of information about publishing, everything you could want to know. Thank you. Thank you guys for, for having me here. Um, just a little bit of background. I am a publisher, but I'm also an author as well. Um, and that's how I got this whole ball rolling. Um, I published a book called A Century of Indiana Glass back in 2005. And uh, I'm a, I, I was an avid glass collector. Now I'm just a glass collector. <laughs> I had to drop the avid because it was just a little too expensive. Um, but in my collecting, um, I went ahead and wrote a book because there was no book out on the market regarding this glassware and the thousands of pieces of glass that the company created. And um, people who collect glass, they want to see these kind of books out there. So uh, there wasn't one. I wrote one. And um, once I wrote it and got it out there, I said, you know, I don't have another book in me necessarily, but I do have some publishing background now because publisher that I worked with, um, they were okay, but I saw a lot of room for improvement and I said, you know, I'm going to start a publishing company where I can devote more time to work with each individual author and create books that they want to have out on the market. So that's how this was all started. So I started Old Line Publishing in 2006, uh, which is a traditional style publishing house, uh, meaning that authors would submit their material to the publisher, not pay anything to have their book published and put out on the market. Um, and then in 2010, we established Maple Creek Media, which is a self-publishing division of Old Line Publishing, where the author does pay for the publishing services to get books out on the market. So uh, we're going to talk about both of them, which one's better, which one is worse, which one fits best for you. And um, hopefully you'll go away today with some uh, better information than you have. Um, so let's start. Uh, how many people have a book published already? Raise your hand. Okay, about three or four. Okay. And how many of those have been published traditionally, meaning that you didn't pay? Okay, several. All right. And how many have self published? Okay, so we're kind of split down the middle. Now, the big question is how many of you have sold a number of books that you expected to sell when you started your journey? Yeah, yeah, I know. Me either, trust me. When I first got my, my first book agreement um, through my, the publisher that I worked with years ago, you know, I sat, got my agreement and I was like, this is going to be great. And I did the numbers and I said, oh yeah, this is going to be so awesome. I'm going to sell a ton of books. And then when the first check arrived, I was like, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> so uh, it is, can be a little bit disappointing. And uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit as we get through. Um, but I talked about Old Line already and Maple Creek. Yeah, the, um, I don't know your password, but your, your network Online? Yeah. Yes, it's all in the clouds. I don't know if anybody works in the clouds these days or works. Don't trust it. <laughs> well, it's it's one of those things where, um, as a publisher, we're kind of required to keep up with newer technologies because um, those publishers that don't uh, become the dinosaurs. And um, you know, Random House, they are gigantic. They are the Brontosaurus, um, but eventually they will become extinct. Um, you know, people said, oh, you know, they're, how, can they, how can that happen? Well, the internet has changed the way everyone does business, and, and particularly the book publishing world. 
And so it has opened up a variety of venues for small publishers. So um, those giants will downsize, small publishers will grow, there will become an equilibrium in the market as the market always does. And um, you know, so you may not be um, you know, a random house author, but you may be a, an author with another publisher. All right, thank you for your patience. So we talked a little bit about Old Mine and Maple Creek. Um, as we go forward, we're going to talk about an overview of the publishing process as a whole. We're going to talk about traditional publishing in the past. We're going to talk about traditional publishing today as it exists, because it's very different than what it was 30 years ago. We're going to talk about self-publishing today. We'll talk a little bit about Amazon, Barnes & Noble, print on demand, and royalties. So, um, I kind of mentioned already that Old Line is, is, is a limited LLC here in Maryland. We started in 2006. Um, at one point, we were publishing about 50 books a year. We've downsized. We only publish about six to a dozen books a year. Um, at this point, um, we have a full network of editors and designers, et cetera, et cetera. We have an open submission policy. However, we are closed at this time. Uh, we publish a wide variety of genres. And we started Maple Creek Media in 2010 as a self-publishing unit. Um, that does much better. We publish a lot more books through that network. Um, and uh, we produce our, all our e-books through there as well. So I'm assuming everyone wants to be um, a world-famous uh, famous author, selling millions of copies of books all over the world. If you're John Green, you could sell 9 million. Jillian Flynn, 9 million. These are the authors who are making Boku bucks in the book industry, and you'll recognize a lot of their names. Uh, a lot of them are fictional authors. Um, Stephen King's up there at 17 million a year. Um, Dan Brown, 25 million a year. The granddaddy of them all, James Patterson, he earns a measly 90 million dollars a year for his book sales. Of course, he, he writes books like every other week, completes a, a novel. These are just book sales, not movies. These are book sales, movies. correct, correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so yeah, so it's awesome. But the thing you have to understand is that these are the exceptions to the rule, the exceptions to the rule. Uh, one of the questions I get asked most often is, as an author, a new author on the book market, how many books can I expect to sell? And um, the truth is about 500 to 1,000 copies of your book. A year? A year. No, period. total, period. <laughs> that's the average. Now, of course, that's averaging, taking in these people who are selling enormous amounts of books and thousands and thousands of authors who have a book published that aren't selling anything at all. So, you average it all out. You're looking at about 500 to 1,000 books for the lifetime of your book. It's just an average. 
So we talk about the uh, publishing process, and many of you have been have already gone through this, um, but it, it's really a very simple process, especially with regards to traditional publishers. Um, if you're looking for a traditional publisher, you're either going to send your manuscript directly to a publisher, or you're going to send it to an agent. You're going to hope and pray that they're going to accept it, and that they're going to offer you an agreement or a contract to publish the book. Um, they will review it, they will assess it, and what are they going to do when they review and assess it? Well, they're going to evaluate how much money they have to spend on it first, and they're going to balance that against the potential earnings of the book. And if they feel the potential earnings of the book far outweigh how much they have to spend, they'll say, okay, we'll give you an agreement. Um, if they think not, then it's a rejection letter that comes to your inbox. Uh, but if they do happen to accept it, uh, then it goes through editing, um, it goes through interior design, it goes through cover design, artwork and illustration is required, not every book does, um, proofreading, printing, distribution, sales, and marketing. So when a traditional publishing house offers you an agreement, you have to understand that they're going to be spending reasonable amount of money with all the aspects of this book production to produce the book and get it out there on the market. And then, in return, what do they do? They ask for the rights to your book. They ask you to sign over the rights to your book. Because that's their only guarantee that you won't take your book somewhere else and do something else with it that will affect their potential earnings. It's a safety clause, really. That's basically what it is. So, and they will tell you, you know, you sign us the rights. We will take care of paying all of 